Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the latest episode of the Genesis Cloud Community's Q&A show, the show where we answer your pressing questions in the Genesis Cloud online community. My name is Matt Lawson. I'm your online community manager. And today we are putting the impossible in impossible questions. So we have new moderators on the site and even they have trouble answering some questions. We're gonna take those questions to our above average Joes. That's right a deep bench of pro service experts who are gonna help our moderators out with some of the toughest questions in the community. So stick around. You're even gonna get an enhanced demo of Velocity Macros. Should be fun, definitely going to be exciting. Now, you may be wondering, am I in Paris? I wish, but I have been hanging out with Nicole and some of our favorite community members playing minute to win it challenges for the community's Olympic games. Um, if you haven't checked out the site yet, please do. We have games going on, there's chances to win, and you can still get involved. I guess I need to put on a more serious face, or at least a more serious background, because it is time for me to call on some Genesis Pro Service veterans to answer some tough, tough questions in the community. Hey, I've got George, I've got Dean, I've got Patrick. Guys, welcome back to the show. How are you? Good. Doing great, Matt. Awesome. I'm um, really glad you guys are here. I don't know if you've heard, but the community has changed since I last saw you. We now have three moderators who are helping to make sure every question in the community has replies. You guys are going to be forced to answer the questions that have slipped by our moderators, and they are lining up to see if you guys can give them help to get some answers out for some very difficult questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Jason was reviewing this question about nested arrays. I won't get into it a whole lot, um, but it comes from my namesake, Matt, who uh, is trying to get out some information from an array. He's looking for a certain output, trying to do some API calls and stuff like that. Um, Jason's request in particular was that he thinks it would be good to have a common understanding of what velocity macros are, how they work, um, because in his experience, he hasn't been able to find a really good example of how it works. So Joe's, I'm gonna forego reading this question instead, kick it off to you all. Can you give us a quick overview of velocity macros? Uh, so I can go ahead and share my screen and actually show an example. Um, of a data action that I have set up using a couple different velocity macros. Um, so in this data action here, I'm getting agents on queue um, by skill, um, which is a very common data action that we see customers leveraging. The, the uniqueness around this one that I've put together is that I've actually made some of the parameters in my request URL um, optional. Um, and so to make it a little easier to read, I've put this into Notepad++. Um, but in here, you know, I'm gonna pass in the QID, that's a requirement. Um, and then basically once we get into this section, I use a velocity macro, um, which is the uh, ESC. Um, and basically what that does is it's gonna take our entire string here. And if there's any spaces or, you know, things that are not um, URL request approved, right? It'll actually format those. Um, and so I've put that in at the front. And then in here, um, I'm gonna be passing in the presence as an input. But when it comes to the routing status, as well as the skills, I've uh, added in another velocity macro, which is optional query parameter. Um, because if I didn't put that in, then basically the request would send that as null and then I would get back no results because I'm trying to do a search for a skill that is blank, right? Um, if I do optional parameter, uh, it does actually uh, include it on the request. Um, 
So I've got that information in there. Um, this is all documented within our velocity macros uh, for data actions page. Um, with this information, um, you can see some of the things that I just covered, um, such as the optional, if I find it, uh, right there, there you go, URL to optional query parameter. Um, another useful thing that you can leverage is the um, Apache Velocity Macro or Velocity Project. Um, and you can see the different variables and methods that could be used. As an example, the escape tool, um, we were talking about that escape URL for formatting. Um, we have this documented on our page, but you can see that here as well, um, showing how hello there uh, will take and put, add a plus in there since we cannot have spaces. Um, the other item that is in the actual translation mapping is when I go and get that information back. Of course, I wanna map that into my contracts here, um, which I have two arrays, one of the in IDs and then the employee IDs. Um, and within that, I've created a translation map to say, take all of the employee IDs, which can be found at this path. Um, you can look at that to be able to find the path. One thing I found that's a little easier is I cheat and I use JSON Pathfinder, to be honest with you, um, just because it's easier to be able to find that specific path that I don't know it's under entities.user.employee.employee ID because that can get really in depth, especially in those nested arrays. Um, and yeah, so this is an example of, of something you can do when it comes to using velocity macros um, on your request, and then also your translation map and what that could look like. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick. I appreciate that demo. Yeah, I think Dean, you had another example you wanted to go through? Yeah, I've got a, a, a one that's a little bit less complex than that one, but it's, it's pretty handy. So I, I had a, a use case recently where the customer had a very specific naming convention for agent queues and we ran into a situation where the, they wanted to be able to identify a particular queue that an agent was a member of okay. programmatically as we went through the flow so and then that uses a a, a a piece of the velocity macro function it's the success template utils um section so let me share my screen so and we can take a look at that really quick um, one of the things I like to do when I'm building a uh, API is, is, is keep the, the default or raw result um, uh, response config handy, because it's always nice to be able to go back and run it and see the raw result. If your translation map or your success template isn't configured right, you won't, might want to see that information first um, to know that you're not going insane. So. What I've got is a, is, a, is a pretty simple one here that's just a list of, of queues by the agent, right? So if we run that, um, we're not returning anything in, into my contract because I don't have it set up yet, but I can go down here to the raw result and see that, hey, I'm a member of all these different queues, but there's just one in particular that I want. And the use case was that it has the word agent in it, right? So what I'm doing is I'm searching on entities with name that has the word agent in it or ends in the word agent in it. And then I'm returning that structure. The way it comes back though, is it comes back in an array and I want it to be in, in an object. So what I'm doing is in the success template, I'm saying I'm using the, the first from array function right here to put this agent Q value back into an object that I can then consume in the, in the, um, in the contract. So if I drop that, function back into the config and we rerun it. Let's we'll save it and rerun it. It'll just come back with that one result, right? So it found the queue that had the word agent in the name of the queue and then returned it as an object that I, that conforms to the contract design. It makes it easier to work with in, in, our, in architect. So that's a pretty handy one too. Okay, awesome. But thanks so much for tagging on the um, additional demo. We appreciate it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Miguel writes, well, first, I guess he shares a Git conversation idea as a custom substitution. And then he writes, good afternoon. I need to launch an automatic response when it is routed to a message queue in a web chat. 
I am thinking of doing it with a script with a call to the API, but I can't find how to do it. Could anyone help me or does anyone have any ideas which API should be used in the DA of the script? He was reading the Get Conversation ID as a custom substitution article, um, but he could not find many good results. Um, Paul, good friend of the show, asked uh, maybe for a few more details, but Joe's, uh, when I ran this question by you, it sounded like you may have an idea of what Miguel is looking for. Yeah, let me go ahead and share my uh, screen as well. And I am going to caveat this to say, if I'm understanding the question correctly, you're wanting to send an automated response again on the load of the script, because we won't know who the agent is that's getting that interaction until it's delivered, right? Otherwise you could send a response within an inbound flow. Um, so the thought process there is one of the things that you can do is within the agent's profile, you of course have their name, and then down in this section, there is a uh, section for agent and you can put in another name here. So if my name is Patrick Johnson, but when I respond uh, with web messaging, chats, SMS, you know, things of that nature, I want Patrick J to be used. Um, so I set that within the profile. And then what you can actually do is within canned responses, um, I have a library here for chat and within that uh, library, I have a greeting and I just simply say, hello, my name is, and this is where you can use substitutions. Um, you can use agent alias, which will use the agent section of your profile. If you use agent name, it will actually use my full name, Patrick Johnson. And then of course we also have the customer name. So you can create this canned response and the thought process there is within your script Although there may not be, from what I could find, an automated action to basically trigger the sending of a canned response on load of the script, which you could use is a data action. Um, and luckily we do have a potential API you could use here, thanks to our good friend, George, um, where he calls out, you might be able to leverage this one. You will need the conversation ID as well as the communication ID. Um, but luckily within the script, um, we do have those two fields as script or variables. Um, so you should be able to pass those variables into the data action um, and set that data action to run on load of the script. Uh, one thing to note though, is if you have this script and the inbound message is delivered to the agent and then that agent actually transfers it to another agent which also uses this script it will load and respond the exact same way right so you could put in uh your action um some if if else kind of logic there um so if you go into your steps you could do if you could do try you know things of that nature um but just just an, an idea of potentially what you could use there. All right, awesome. Uh, George, Dean, anything you wanna add to this or did Patrick cover it? Just the one thing would be making sure you add that particular response into the message field that's there in that API call to be able to send a message. All right, so this next question comes to us from Dan. He wants to know about whispers, scary. Dan writes, we set whisper audio and in inbound flows for some cues and not for others. Our agent to agent transfer speed dial buttons transfer via DNIS to a inbound flow, which directs the transfer to the proper queue. If a whisper is set in an inbound call flow to queue A, the agent handling the call for queue A gets the expected whisper. If that agent then call, cold transfers that call to another queue, like B, which does not have a whisper set in the inbound flow, that cold transfer is being made through. The agent handling the call for QB gets the whisper set for QA because it is still the whisper for the ongoing call. Is there a way to unset a whisper for an ongoing call? Um, George, what do you think? Any advice for Dan? I think on the third answer down there, it mentions uh, creating an in queue flow for the transfer. And it also mentions we've seen some odd behaviors with Whisper A playing even after Whisper B is executed. Just a note there, an in queue flow does not always run for a transfer uh, or a call coming into a queue. If there's an agent available, it'll go straight to the agent without ever touching the in queue flow. So that's probably why you would have 
uh, sporadic behavior on actually getting the new whisper to, to actually play. So in this instance, uh, one thing is to make sure that the agents are always using that button to do the agent to agent transfer. That's very important because it needs to go through an inbound call flow before it gets to the other queue. And then what you would do is uh, just, if you don't want to have a whisper for a particular queue, you can just record like 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds of silence into a file and use that prompt, that whisper prompt uh, of silence as the new whisper. So you're not deleting the old whisper, but you're replacing it with a tiny bit of silence. So it should not really be noticed at all when it comes into the new agent, It'd be so short. And then once it goes through that inbound call flow to get to the new agent, it's going to transfer over you set the whisper in that inbound call flow it'll always run and then that should replace with silence and effectively do what you want that's the best i can think of right off and probably how i would approach it first okay cool um dean i know we've talked about this question a little bit offline what anything you want to add here no i thought that was a pretty good idea initially i was thinking about trying to run another whisper prompt which is essentially what george is doing but just with no audio in it. So I think that's a pretty good idea. All right, everyone, that concludes this week's episode. Now, I believe if my calculations are correct, the next episode will be on, I actually have it in front of me. We're gonna be talking about work automation. So that should be a fun episode. Some new features have rolled out and we're gonna be talking to you about what you can expect. Um, as for me, thank you so much for the above average Joes. I need to go ahead and slip into a more comfortable background because I have some more minute to win it sessions to host. And I hope to see you there. And uh, if I don't, I hope to see you in the community. Enjoy the rest of your summer. We'll talk soon. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.